So when we're talking about programming, we said that every single thing that you do is going to be changed. Uh, every thing, single thing that you uh, um, do that has a purpose um, comes with a series of instructions. Anything that you do, any task that you do in your life without even knowing it, you know that you're following a certain sequence to get to that point from A to B. Getting out of the house, you want to go to the bus stop, take the bus, come over here. There are a sequence of the things that you can do. You cannot first go into the bus and then open the door of the house. That doesn't make sense. It, everything comes in a, in a sequence, right? Like that just makes sense. Um, that's what programming is about. You have to find out what the sequence of things are. That's analysis, OK? Analysis of the business logic. So you have to listen to the person who has the problem. Rarely it's yourself. Usually you're a programmer, you're working for a company. Um, let's say you're, a, you're an analyst and uh, you want to create an application and there's this client comes to you and says, I want this and this and this and this to be done. So you sit, you interview with the guy, you try to find out how the things work, then you put things in sequence, then you write a program for it. That's how everything works. Now, we haven't even taught you 2 plus 2 is 4, and I just told, told you how to send a missile to Mars. So let's get back to our, our business. In, in programming, there are two major things that happen so we can actually make things um, right. First, we have to be able to make decisions based on criteria of the, whatever uh, the, the logic of the business is. We have to say, for example, standing in a bar, I'm a bartender. A person comes to me, wants a drink. I'm asking, how old are you? The person says, 18. Do I give the person the drink or not? Maybe I'm in Quebec. See, you have to, you have to, you have to, so you have to see where you're, doing, like, you have to see what the rules of the business are. If I'm in Quebec, it's fine, 18 years old, let's get him a drink. Otherwise, don't get out of here. Answered? So, the decision making comes with a question. You, you always have a criteria. You check something, and after checking that something, you make up your mind, and based on that, you do something. That decision making, uh, be that in, in here it's actually specified as such. So you have a selection, true and a false, based on true thing you do something, or false you do something else. Uh, it's called flow charting, by the way. Okay? That decision making is done in C language using something called an if statement. Okay? Now again, define. I keep forgetting this, so correct me if I'm wrong. Secure, no warnings. Warnings, OK. And then I have include stdio dot h, standard input output. I am creating a function. The function main is supposed to return an integer to the operating system. The integer that it returns is always zero. It's not going to change. And it doesn't receive anything from the operating system. That's why we have a void over there. All right? I'm going to reduce the lights, if you don't mind, because that thing is right above the, all right. So So the very first thing that we need to do to understand what the syntax of an if statement is in C language. An if statement in C language happens like this. So you have the word if, OK? And then you have parentheses in front of it where the condition is going to go into. And then after this, you have a section that happens if that condition is true. Otherwise, that section won't happen. That is a general. Uh, syntax of an if statement. And the condition in here, what is the condition? We already know. We talked about it. 
Bless you. The condition over there is what? Pardon me? <laughs> Not basically age of drinking, but a general condition in C language. How is it true and how is it false? What does C language do in those parentheses over there? Evaluates the value inside whatever it is, and if the value is zero, it is false. It means what is between curly brackets won't happen. If the value of the, that is evaluated is not zero, it means it's true, then it's going to take action. That part that is inside the, uh, the curly bracket will happen. Are we okay with this? Very simple and straightforward. Okay? Now, so in here, if I say, integer a, 23, and in here, if I say, if a is less than 25, and in here, I'm going to say printf, a is less than 25. Are we OK with this? All right. So that's what an if statement is. Now, the condition that you see over there is using the, the operators that we talked about in C, uh, like the less than operator is a conditional operator. And comparison. It compares the two and returns either zero, 0 or 1. But again, if I, if I have the condition like this, Then in here, I have to say A is not 0. That's the only thing that it guarantees. Are we OK with the second one? Are we OK with the second one? So the first one is comparing A to, so it's actually an operation that the evaluation is happening over there. It checks the value of gets the value of A23 less than 25. The condition becomes true. True is 1. If 1, so it's true. It's going to print A is less than 21. Then it comes says, if A. So I'm not mentioning what. It's just the value. It takes that value. Is that value 0? No, because it's not 0, then it's going to say A is not 0, correct? So if I had a as 0 over here, then what would happen? Then it's going to say A is less than 25. Is 0 less than 25? Yes, so it's going to say A is less than 25. Then if A, A is 0, then what's going to happen? Nothing's going to happen. It's not going to print anything because that's 0. It means it's false. Are we OK with this? All right. So. I'm not going to even run that thing because, uh, oops. Now the conversation is going to happen. So when the program happens, it's something like, now we're going to go to that bartender thingy. We're going to use that if statement for the bartender thingy. So I am the bartender. The program is the bartender. Standing over there is going to ask for the age of the person, right? So the first thing that I'm going to say is printf. Uh, how old are you? OK. And then I'm going to get an integer that is the age of the person, right? Correct? Where do I put it? Inside age that I do not have. So I'm going to write over here int age. Do I need to initialize that age to 0 or anything? Do I need to initialize it? No, because I'm just reading it. Why do I need to set it to something? So I'm going to put it in address of age. Remember, if you tell ampersand age, I'm going to kill you. Remember that, right? There is no ampersand. It's address of age. OK? Say it correctly so you learn it when the time comes. When we're going to actually talk about pointers and address, then everything's going to make sense. 
So scan, and I think I, I um, forgot to put a little F over there. So I'm going to get the age, right? Are we okay with this? Mm -hmm. And after I get the age, what do I do? I'm going to say if age is greater than or equal to 19, we are in Ontario, right? In here, I'm going to say, what would you like to drink? And they're going to say, chocolate milk. Anyway, <laughs> waste of programming, eh? Okay, so, so, and in here, I'm going to say, if age is less than 19, the exact opposite of what we had over there, then we're going to say, printf, Get out of here. <laughs> Call security. Okay? So that's that one. So printf, in here I'm going to say welcome to Seneca Pub. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Something like that. We have a pub here, right? Right in food court, right over there, right beside the gym. If you don't know, there's a place up there, I think. They know bottles over there? Really? I thought. I thought. No, no, I think they're actually, they sell beer and stuff in there. Do they? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Everybody, after the break, we're going to run over there, have a beer, and come back. Okay, sadly, I can't. I'm sick out here. Soon, soon. Give me, give me three days. <laughs> Next lap, we're going to go over there. We're going to be in a bar. Okay. <laughs> All right, now let's, let's walk through this. Now, this is what I want you to see. I know the debugging thing is going to happen the next week, but I'm doing it now, OK? Is it next week or now? Let me see what am I supposed to teach today. Logic, style guide, yeah, so it's essentially logic, but, but uh, again, Debugging and stuff, I'll do it all the time, and I'm going to so just, just, just please listen to me and, and, and walk through with me as I'm going through this, okay? First, let's run it and see how does it going to work. So I'm going to go control F5, control F5. Remember, executes Visual Studio and compiles, ex, uh, ask Visual Studio to compile, build, and run the program without debugging, without debugging. And this is what you get. Welcome to Seneca Pop. How old are you? I am five years old. Get out of here. <laughs> All right. So, so, <laughs> run it again. How old are you? Now in here I'm going to say 34. They're going to say, what would you like to drink? All right. So, now let's walk through this and see what happens. So, if I want to walk through, Come in and open up the debug window, and over there you see that it says start debugging is 5, which means it's going to build, execute everything exactly like execute without debugging, but it turns on debugging, which means certain places you can put stop signs and ask the uh, Visual Studio to stop at that execution. So if I want to run right before the first prompt, or I don't care about welcome, welcome to Seneca, I want it to stop right before scanf. If I want to do that, what I can do over here is to bring my mouse right beside scanf and keep going. Ah, you see mouse went the other way, you see that? Yeah, ta, ta, you see that? When you go over there, you just click over there, it puts a stop sign over there. Which means if instead of control F5, I press F5, it runs the thing and right stops right over there. And I can now check all the variables and see how things are winging and go step by step, which I'm going to do now. So I'm going to press F5 instead of Control F5. And ta-da. It goes, so as you see, the features are changed. The solution explorer is gone. So whatever you set your Visual Studio to be, when it's in debug mode, it remembers that. So when you go to debug mode, it does all the things. Because I want to kind of bring it um, to left. I'm going to actually bring it over here to left and then have the output at right. So now as you see over here at left side, 
It is right standing before scanf, and we have the H thingy over there. And this is, let me just bring it over here and make this a little bigger. Okay. Now, you can bring mouse, bring the mouse over the variables that you have in your program and see what the contents are. So I can actually bring the mouse right over age, and I see I have some gigantic garbage in it. No idea what is that. It's actually a negative number in there, but it's all garbage, right? And then I'll press now. I want to execute things line by line. When you go to the debug section, you will see that there are two things, step over and step into. For now, step over is our friend. That is F10. What is step into? You press F11, you'll see what I mean. You're going to go, what the hell? And you'll find out that it actually steps into, which means it goes into the scanf function and tells you how scanf is working. So you're going to go through the source code of scanf and see how the scanf is written. So you don't want to know. Believe me, you don't want to go there. Okay? And whenever you are in that situation, and you, oops, you went into a function that you don't want to go, get out as shift F11. Okay? You see, it's all there. I'm not making things up. It's just over there. It's a C. You see, step into is F F11. Step over is F10. Step out is F shift F11. Okay. So now I want to do step by step. So I'll press F10. When I press F10, it executes that scan F. So the focus goes on the running thingy. How old are you? Now I'm going to say over here 12, and I hit enter. When I hit enter, I'll bring the mouse. If you have to click on this one to activate it, and then bring the mouse, you'll see age actually has 12 in it. Then you are coming over here, age greater than 19. If you want to see if the condition is right or not, highlight the whole thing, and then take a look. Oh, highlight the whole thing, and take a look at it. You see what does it say? Age greater than recline is false. So that's why using an ID is an amazing thing, because it walks through the program for you. You can actually go and debug everything. So it actually tells you what's wrong and what is not. So it is false. Because it's false, it means the first one is not going to happen, right? So it skips over the if statement, the curly bracket in front of it, and jumps to line 11. I press F, F10 again, and it goes here. Now I have age less than 19. If I actually highlight the whole thing and look at the condition, I'll see the condition is actually true. And because it's true, it goes to the printf, executes the printf, and returns 0. It's done. I'm just simply going to press stop. You see the stop? Stop debugging goes back to the uh, old thing that it had before. Are we OK with this? Are we OK? <laughs> All right. Now you can have more than one condition in an if statement. So in here I can say uh, printf. Sorry, you must be 19 or older to be served here. OK. And then politely we're going to say get out of here. OK. Um, are we okay with this? Now, if you see now we have two, because we, have, we, can, we can have two or many statements. You have open curly bracket and close curly bracket. If you only have one statement, you can ignore the curly brackets and just leave it like this. Take a look. Okay? You understand that? Not in my class. You are not allowed to. In my class, every single if statement or anything that you're going to learn, you have to put curly bracket afterwards. Why? Because of <coughs> style and guidelines. As I told you, whenever you are going to a company, there is some nut job up there who wants things that you don't like. I am the nut job for you now. And I'm saying don't do that because it helps you learn better. Okay. But of course, I will give that to you in a walkthrough to see if you know how it works or not. Okay? But you, in your projects, in a test and stuff like that, when you are rushing and you have to do something, do it quickly. That's fine. You can do that. But when you are in a project, you're writing projects, you're writing workshops, I want you to be tidy. I want you to write the curly bracket anyway because it makes the uh, code more readable. Let's put it that way. Okay? So I'm going to leave it like this, but please don't do it. Okay? 
I forgot to reduce the volume of this. Let me just. Boom. All right. So are we OK with this beautiful if statement of mine? So I'll put, um, yeah. So any questions down to here? Suggestions? Objections? Yes. When the time comes. Oh, okay. Are we okay? Yes. What if he puts a number as a word? Oh, as a word. Oh, that's a beautiful question. So let's do it. Let's see what's going to happen. So this time I'm just going to press F10. When I press F10 right from the beginning with no stop sign, schmutz sign thingy, if I press just F10, it compiles and runs and stops at the very first line of the code. See? Pa! Stops right at the beginning of the main. So you can do that instead of actually hitting someplace. If your program is long, you need to sometimes put a stop sign and run to after a certain thing. But now I want to just start from the beginning. That's why I'm doing this. So now uh, if, we are coming over if we are coming over here, you see the age over here is like that. You see that? OK? Now it comes over here, age. Now it's going to say, how old are you? I'm going to say five. Is that OK? F-I-V-E. And I hit Enter. Excusez-moi. Stop. I'm going to go back. For the purpose of answering your question, I'm going to put over here one, two, three, four. I just want to initialize it to something. Otherwise, OK, you'll see what I mean now. So I'm going to start again. So, so we are at this stage, and, and I'm, going to, uh, uh, I'm going to come over here, and H has 1, 2, 3, 4 in it, correct? Now I do F5, F, uh, I do F10, and I'm going to put over here F, I, V, E, 4, 5, and I hit Enter. Let's take a look at the value of H. What is that? One, two, three, four. Did not change. Did not do anything. OK? Let me explain what's going on. When you are dealing with scanf or the family of scanf, scanf, printf, or whatever you have, OK, you tell to the scanf what to expect in the entry, OK? Assuming user is the same person. 99% of the time, it's not, OK? But now, because we don't know programming much, we are assuming user is same. That's why. But when scanf wants to get something and what, it's, what it looks for, the range of things that it looks for is not there, it simply says, I'm not going to deal with this, and just quits and gets out. And nothing happens. We're going to actually use that feature to catch the stupid ones. That when we're going to say that, then we're going to say, hey, while you're doing five, I asked you a number. We're going to come to that point. We're going to use this feature, the fact that scanf fa fails itself when it wants to read something and it can't. It just doesn't put anything in the age. OK? So remember this. That was a beautiful question. So when scanf wants to ex read something, now anything, if you want to. So is it possible if you, f if you read a character, is it possible for scanf to fail? If I, if, I, if I say, please enter your uh, letter grade for the subject. So you are putting A, B, C, or D, or, or F, OK? And I do scan F, and I do per character, and I, and I do the per percent C, and I read it. Is it possible for scan F to fail? Can you enter something, then scan F fails? What is the outside of range of a letter? Pardon me? Well, how can you do that? Does your keyboard have anything like that? What is this one? Like two? If you put two, two still is a character. It's the character two that is going to read, not the number two. So scanf with percent C will never fail. It will read, of course, it's going to read what's, it's, you're not, it's not what you expected, but it will still read it, so it won't fail. But if you put LF, if you put D, things that 
have a limited range of acceptable values, then scanf will fail. All right? All right. Stop. Any other question? <laughs> Go ahead. You are my question. Every semester, I have a question guy. <laughs> and that's my question guy. Go ahead. In most websites, they don't ask for age. They ask for your birth complete. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Cool. Deep breath. <sighs> Baby steps. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> for that, you need to first know how to get the data of the system. Right? You have to be able to ask the computer, what is the current date? Then you have to have that date, the date of birth. Then you have to reduce the two. And it's not only that, because if it's a year, then it's a month and a day. It's actually much more. See, remember that I told you we have, when you are actually dealing with certain type of logics, it looks very simple, like I'm coming to school. But when you want to actually put it in, this, in, in sequence, it's very complicated. It's the same thing with that. So when you are doing something like that, I have to actually check the year. First, make sure the year is OK. If the year is OK, they check the month, then check the day, and then do the calculation, make sure that. Yada, yada, yada. Are we OK with this? I like that. You see, please think that way. If you want to learn programming, I don't want to blow smoke, OK? I'm just telling you that, I'm just telling you, that you have to think that way. You have to uh, always say, analyze things. Don't look at everything very, you know what I mean, at, at, at top of the surface. Go deep and see what, what you can do. And that's uh, what problems can, can come up and how things can be written better. All right. All right, so we know this. Now I'm going to go, so I'm going to say over here, uh, 0, 2, dash, if, dot, c. So that's the second one. Now, when the conditions that you are dealing are extremely uh, are exclusive, which means it, either this happens or the other one, then you can always expand your if statement to a more uh, uh, comprehensive one with an else. So if statement just by itself is not a statement. It's if condition first uh, block, else second block. So if I put an else over there, essentially I'm saying if the first condition is true, this happens. Otherwise, this happens. Of course, if the two conditions are not exact opposite of each other, I can't do this. Then I need two if, if statements. OK? But if uh, uh, they are exactly opposite of, of each other, then this is the, the case. OK? Uh, let me walk through this. So now if I actually run this beautiful program of mine, I have to remove that one, two, three, four over there because it just doesn't make sense when you are reading something to initialize it. I'm going to remove it for the other one too because it's going to confuse the heck out of everyone. But uh, anyways, oh. I'll, I'll show you something in a second. Um, so I'm going to go over here. So I'm going to read the age. Now in here, I'm going to say, uh, how old are you? I'm going to put over here 12 and I hit enter. Now, we know if it's true, it's going to jump to the first one, so I'm not going to give an example on that. So this is false. Because it's false, the first part is going to get skipped, and it's going to jump to the second part and says, sorry, you must be 19 or older to be served here, and get out of here. Are we OK with this? Are we OK one? Are we OK two? Sold. All right. Now, decision me, so it's going to be 0, 3, if else dot c. Anyway, so um, 
Now we have the if and else statement, and let's, let's change that criteria now. Now, we want to ask a student what was the percentage of the, of the marks that the person got in a semester, and we want to tell them what is its letter grade. So that's what we want to do. Okay? So that's what we want. So what, how, how can we do it? So, so I'm going to say, let's call, oh, let's remove this. Oh, shoot. I, just a second. I know I'm going to forget, so let me just do this. This, uh, this one and this one. Let me open these two. Open. And this has to go away. And this has to go away. All right. So now what do we want to do? We want to ask the student, what is your mark out of 100? And the student's going to tell us 89. And I'm going to tell the student, your mark is A plus. Oh, no, it's A. If it's higher than 90, it's A plus, right? Are we okay with that? All right. So if I want to do that, how do I do it? So, so in here, I'm going to say uh, printf. Uh, please uh, enter your mark out of 100. Okay. Now I'm going to get the mark. So I'm going to say scanf percent D address of mark. And what is a mark? A mark is an integer. Are we okay? Sometimes it gives me, oh yeah, comma. I forgot to put it. So if I want to do that, how do I do it? How do, how do we deal with this thing? So um, if the mark is, how do, we, how do we do this? I have to check and see the range of the mark, right? How do we do this? Sure, let's start with the bottom. So let's say if it's between 0 and what is the maximum thing? We're not going to go A, D, D plus, A, A plus. We're going to go A, B, C, D, A, 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 A plus, A, B, C, D, and F. I'm not going to go more than that. Okay, that's, that's too much. Okay, so we'll start from 0 up to what is the highest mark to get an F? 49. So I'm going to say if mark is greater than or equal to zero and mark is less than or equal to 49, then what's going to happen? No, I'm just going to say printf. Printf, your mark is... The way you said it, it, it was so harsh. I mean, like the person who's going to kill himself. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you failed. You know? Bad. End of your life now. OK, so, <laughs> so <coughs> now the next thing I can do is to check for the next range. So the next range would be, can I put an else in here? I can't, because I have 50 different things to go through. Else is only the next one, right? So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to say over here, if mark is greater than or equal to 50 and mark is less than or equal to what is the other one 59 right or we can do less than 60 let's do it like that I'm not gonna go with less than or equal this I'm just gonna do it like this so it actually makes it looks looks so we so we can get them both so we understand so the, so it means mark can be 40 now when I put less than 50, and that's your quizzes. Let's say you made a mistake on that, OK? When, you, when the condition is less than something, that never happens inside the, OK? OK, so, so 50 will never happen in there, so it's going to come to the other one. Are we OK with this? So in here, I'm going to say printf, your mark. What's going on? What's your, you, you marks is? OK, mark is, what is that one? What is the next one? D? Okay, beautiful. And I'm going to go to new line. Now, something is getting repeated over here. Why do I keep saying, your mark is, your mark is, your mark is, your mark is? I'm just going to take this printf, x, and put it right up here. Say your mark is, 
right? And in here, I'm just going to say printf f. All right? And in here, I'm going to say printf full stop, go to new line. So I'm not going to keep doing that thing over and over. Try to always learn how to uh, take the code that is repeated and put it in one place so you don't have to do it over and over. Okay? That helps you later on to, uh, to easily write functions. You will when we come to it. All right? So that's that one. So in here, just print FD. Okay? By the way, we have a function that you can print one, one character. We'll call put char, put ch. Put char or put ch. I think put char, and then you put over here um, just one character, d. Okay? You can do that too, but I'm, I'm going to put print up for now. Okay? So that, uh, the logic is almost the same. So I'm just going to have the if statement over here go. So the next one is what? D and. Uh, uh, e, uh, A, B, C, uh, uh, C, and then um, B and A, right? And when we have A plus. So, so in here I'm going to say if mark is greater than or equal to 60 and less than 70. Uh, wait a minute. 50 to 60 is? Yeah, that's correct. So this is C. And this one is greater or equal to 70 and less than 80. And that's uh, a B. And greater or equal to 80, less than 90. That's an A. And greater or yada, yada, yada. So that's 90 and less than 100. That's an A plus. Is this program correct? Thank you. That was a bug, an intentional bug. So you're going to be a good debugger in your future. <laughs> OK? <laughs> Which means this program wouldn't have covered 100. OK, now it does. So, so in here, uh, I'm going to put less than or equal, and that covers everything. Do I need to? Do I need to uh, walk through this? Would you like me to walk through this? Okay? Okay, I'm going to walk through it. <laughs> Just for one reason, I'll, I'll tell you why. So, so I'm going to run it. I'm going to go step by step. So, so in here it's going to say, please enter your mark at 100 and read the mark. So in here, I'm going to put, say, 75, OK? And I hit Enter, OK? Now we'll come over here. So it says, so it checks this one. This condition will go false. So this won't happen. Now this condition will go false. So you see that it's checking the condition one by one. And now this condition will go false. And this condition will go true, correct? So it's going to say, B, and then this condition goes false, this condition goes false, and then dot and new line and program ends. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? All right. Zero for if one of all dot C. So the, the procedure we are looking at to go through an if statement and select one of all the options. If you are doing something like this, now I have a question. If mark is greater than zero and less than 50, Let's do it like this. If mark is less than 50, it's the other way. I want to make it, give me two seconds. Mm. 
now, I'm going to write it in a different way. I want to actually evaluate the data. So I'm going to say if mark is less than 0, what does it mean? Of course it's negative, but what does it mean for our business? You ask somebody, what is your mark? The person says minus 5. You're going to tell him? That's invalid, right? So I'm going to say printf invalid. Exactly that. So your mark is invalid, right? So if the mark is less than 0, it's invalid. Otherwise, there's a chance that it's good, right? Correct? So in here, I'm going to say else. Are we OK with this? So inside that else statement, only positive numbers are available. Correct? Now, how can we make that else to be all the good ones? <laughs> if the mark is less than 0, what are the bad marks? Can somebody tell me in English? Well, no, the whole full sentence. In English, tell me, what is an invalid mark? Ha ha! No, you have to be very s slowly. Less than zero? Or, thank you very much. Or, that's what I was saying. Or, and then? Greater than, great. So, so in here I can say if mark is less than zero, or mark is greater than one hundred, then it's invalid. Else, now in here I have everything that is valid. Correct? Are we okay with this? Now, if mark is less than, is it possible for it to be? Less than zero in this else statement? No. So think about this. See, you had no problem writing an if statement. See, this is an open bracket and a closed curly bracket, right? I wrote an if statement, everybody was happy with it, right? Correct? Mm -hmm. Now, this is an open bracket and a closed curly bracket between these two. You see that? So that's an int spot. In that area, this area, I am happy because I don't have any invalid marks. I am sure that the value in there is between 0 and 100, 100%. It's impossible for it to be wrong, OK? Because of the condition. The condition dictates that if it's less than 0 or greater than 100, print invalid. Otherwise, which means in that area between life 12 and 15, the mark is so now, in there, I can write another if statement. Now I can say in here, do I need to check to see if it's greater than 100? No. Of course it's greater than 100. But if mark is less than 50, then what is the mark? Mark is F. Perfect. Now, else. Now I have another area over here now. So in this area, in this second else area that I have over here, what do I have? It is definitely between 50 and 100, correct? So now I can check to see if mark is less than 60. So if it's less than 60, definitely is more, what did I do? So in here, it's definitely greater than 50, right? So I'm going to say, if it's less than 60, then printf c, correct? Oh, sorry, printf d. Else. So now, in this else statement, it's definitely between 60 and 100, right? So now in here, I can say, if. less than 70, 
then printf c if I can type it of course correct and else now between these two areas it's definitely let me just organize this oh. now in here it's definitely between 70 and 100 so I'm gonna say if mark less than 80 bear with me I know it's getting boring but bear with me printf it's B correct and else oh ugly 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 okay in now this in this place it's definitely between 80 and 100 correct so I'm gonna say over here if mark is less than 90 then printf a correct now between these two area it's definitely between 90 and 100 right so I don't need to check anything anymore if it's there it's an A plus correct so printf a plus now do you realize what I told you the tab size should be 2 imagine if your tab size was 8 how many indentation you had to do you would have come where I know it looks very complicated right very complicated and what the hell is going on don't worry I'm gonna make it simple all right but I'm just gonna run it for you to tell you that it's this is much more efficient than the thing that we have done before if you recall oh shoot look at this I edited the other one copy everything close no don't save open this one control a and v and save let's see if I ruin the other one or not no if you recall whenever I had for example if I had 70 over here if I had 65 it checks the first one second third fourth fifth sixth, and then it prints this one right so every condition had to be checked correct but because in this one every single condition is sitting in a belly of the next condition then if one of them happens completely the rest of the story is going to get ignored so let's put 60 over here now I'm going to run this pro program oh I have an error what is the error missing semicolon somewhere stupid compiler okay <laughs> all right what is this okay so now I'm gonna run this and it's gonna say I'm gonna put over here 65 and I hit enter so now it is not within that that boundary it's not gonna do anything is it less than 50 it's not is it less than 60 it's not is it less than 70 yes it is so it prints C and the rest of the story is sitting in an else statement right so everything's gonna get skipped and it jumps back out so all the other conditions are skipped now but this is horrible writing something like this takes nine years and all the indentation that you have over there is gonna drive you nuts that's why they created another thing to make your life a little easier so zero five bad else if that's bad else if uh, dot c I'm gonna make it a good else if now which I think I hope that is going to make sense okay look at this you see this I'm gonna remove this one and put it over here take a look you see that I'm gonna and and I'm gonna bring this down then I'm gonna remove these guys and bring this down and I'm gonna remove these guys and bring all these down I should have given you a break before doing this 
<laughs> I'm going to do something interesting. Give me a second. All right, now I'm going to do this. I'm going to go to Edit, Advanced, Format Document. Wow, done. Okay. So, what did I? Take a look. This is exactly what I've done the other uh, at the other side. It's called an ELSIF statement. Whenever you have one of many selections that you do, did you see that complicated nested thingy that I have? You don't have it anymore. What you do, you put it in series of ELSIFs, which means when the condition comes in, whenever you have this construct, which means if one condition, else if, another condition, else if, another condition, else if, else if, else if, and an else at the end, whenever you have series of conditions like this, if one of them is met, the rest of them are ignored. Only one of many happens. It's called an else if uh, construct. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? Yes. Can you put it in what? An invalid. An invalid. Control F5. Now, in here I can do something nice too with that invalid thingy that I'm talking about. You'll see for a second. So enter the mark you, uh, uh, out of 100. I'm going to put over here 120 and hit enter. Your mark is invalid. Right? What do you mean by that? Oh, repeat and repeat and repeat and over, over. That's called validation. We'll come to it. But we can do something nice in here. What you can do, we know that if scanner fails, we know that if scanner fails, attention, we know that if scanner fails, it's not going to put anything in mark, right? So what I can do, I can play a trick. I can set mark to 200 something invalid, right? Now it works for everything. If user enters something stupid, stupid, and hits enter, it says it's invalid. Why? Because it cannot read it. Because it cannot read it, mark remains 200. Because it's 200, it's invalid. It's going to show it. So it's a trick that I played. OK? Like this, it, it becomes a foolproof program, actually, which means the user has to enter something nice. If they enter anything that it doesn't understand, it's going to tell it's an invalid. Yes? Um, when you selected format document, did it just um, take the examples above what you highlighted? No, you can do section of the whole thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, format, it, it just formats the document, right? So it's a good thing. Uh, if, you, if you get something that you see it going bananas, you can, I think it's Control KD. Control. Edit, advance. Oh, sorry. So Control K, Control D. So if you hit Control K and then immediately Control D, it formats the whole document. It sets it proper. Are we okay? Okay. Let's go for a break. Come back. We'll talk about repetition. When you look at the logic parts, the if-else stuff is coming. When the next topic, you're going to see there are different ways of doing the same thing. I'll talk about the first way that is important, OK? I don't care about the rest when you can do it with only this one. If you can actually use everything using this one, you don't need to use the other method, methods of doing the same thing, OK? Because it's not important for a, for a programmer at our stage to know five different ways of doing the same thing in a weak way. i rather you only know one way to do something correctly, OK? So we'll, you'll see soon, OK? All right. So did I have the good if-else? Yes. Now.
computers um, are worthless. Remember that when I came to class at the beginning of the semester, what I told you? I told you, I told you everything aside, I have only one rule in my class. And that is when I talk, nobody else does. Okay? I have only one rule in this class. When I talk, nobody else does. Please. Okay? That's the only thing. I don't want your respect. I don't want anything. That's the only thing I ask you to do. So, thank you. So, uh, computers are worth nothing if they cannot repeat something. The whole process of the whole goodness of a computer is that it, it can repeat things. So when we are when we can perform a task, we can ask it to do it for us over and over and over and over and over again. And that's how the computers work. And that repetition is exactly like an if statement. Absolutely no difference. Okay? So we have an if statement. So in here I say if mark is greater than 70%, then I'm going to say printf, good job. OK? Are we OK with this? Are we OK with this? So it says, if that condition is true, printf, good job. Instead of if. I can say while. The exact same thing. The difference is that it's going to keep doing it until that condition goes false. Over and over and over and over. So if I run this beautiful program of mine, how much did you get? And I'm going to say 80%. And it's going to say, good job, forever. This is called an endless loop. Okay? This is where your program hangs. Okay? Now you see kind of it's printing something. So you see all these flickers and you think it's, you know it's working. But if in that loop I did not print anything, you wouldn't have seen anything, right? You would see the cursor blanks and it does nothing. That's when we call a program, if my, my program, it's hung. It doesn't work anymore. So it keeps going like this forever and keeps printing and printing and printing because mark always remains uh, uh, what it is and it never changes, right? Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? All right. Now, so our job with a while statement is essentially is going into the body of the while statement. And the same rule applies, again. If it's only one, you can do it like this, and it works perfectly. You see that? If I do it like this, it still works the same way. If it's only one line, you can uh, ignore it, but not in my class. Remember that. So sometimes you see when they want to repeat something that is only one line, they write the while loop like this. Okay, it's a free format language. You can do that, but not in my class again. All right? So that's that one. Now, to change the mark inside the loop, what I can do is to ask it again. Right? I get asked, so I'm going to say, please enter your mark at 100. It's going to get the mark. It's going to check. If the mark is greater than 70, it's going to print good job. Then it's going to say, please enter your mark at 100. It asks me again. I'm going to enter the mark, and if from 11, it jumps back to 7 again. If that mark is still greater than 70, then it's going to print good job again. And not, it's going to stop. OK? So if now what I do, if I run this program now, see what happens. 
If I say out of 100, I'll go 78. It says good job. Enter your mark out of that one. I'm going to say 90. It says good job again. I'm going to say 76. Good job again. I'm going to say 60. Program ended. Okay? That is called repetition. And with this repetition and this if statement that you just, all the if statements that I told you, with this and the repetition that I told you, you can do everything in IPC 144. Finished. You don't need to learn anything else. Done. There are so many different constructs to do repetition. For loop, do while, all those things. There's switch statement that to do one selection. Go read the logic thingy. You've done it already, you've done it already right? You don't need any of those. If and while, everything can be done. Anything that you do in this semester can be done with that with absolutely no problem. Are we, do we understand this? Are we okay with this? All right, so while loop not always happens like this. So in here, um, say I want to change the program in another way. I want to ask for the mark. Okay, I want to ask for the mark, then I want to see if it's the good thing or not, then I'm going to say either good job or I'm going to say try harder. Okay, and then I want to keep asking again. So let's see how we can do that. So you know how the while loop works. While a condition, whatever is inside the body keeps happening over and over, right? Now in here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to write the code like this. So I'm going to say if mark is greater than 70, I'm going to say print of good job. OK. Then I'm going to say else. If mark is greater than 50, print of eh? <laughs> you got something. Else, I'm going to say try harder. Now, please note, I am assuming the user is the same person. OK? I am assuming user is the same person. The person actually is going to enter the number between 0 and 100. OK? So that part, I'm going to, so if it's greater than 70, it's going to print good job. If it's greater than 50, so if it's not greater than 70, it means it's smaller than 70, assuming that user is sane. OK? That sanity will going to add to it later. If mark is greater than 50, then I'm going to say, eh, well, OK. OK? And if it is less than, if it's not those, it means it's less than 50, right? Now I'm going to say try harder, OK? Now, I want to keep asking this over and over and over and over and over and over until user wants to stop, OK? So to test it, I'm going to put the whole thing, the process that you see. This is what I want to repeat, right? I want to ask the user to do something. So what I do, I put the whole process inside a while loop. While, and I'm going to put over here one, which means always, forever. Which means the whole process is going to happen over and over, correct? Are we okay with this? So if I run this, of course, it's never going to end. And what is the build there? What? Print if? Okay. <laughs> All right. So I keep saying over here 50, try harder. Actually, 50 is not supposed to be try harder. 50 is past. It's A. See? Another bug. Anyways, so I'll go over here, 70, it's going to say, eh, I'll go 
AD, and it's going to say good job. Okay, and it keeps going, never stops. So what can I do in here? What I can do is this. This is what they call a flag. Okay, and I put the flag in a way that it makes sense. So I'm going to say int done is equal to zero. Okay. The word done, what does it mean? I'm finished. Okay. If that's the case, what do I put? What should I put in the while loop? I have to say say while while done. It means it's if it's finished, continue. What do I say? While? While not done, right? So I'm going to say while not done, do this, right? Because done is zero, it means I'm not done, right? It's going to keep going. Now all I need to do is to go after the process is done over here, ask the user if they want to continue or not. Right? I'm going to say printf continue continue. Then I'm going to say yes or no. So now the user is going to give me y or n. What do I get y or n in? Inside? A character. So I need a character. So I'm going to say scanf get a character, and forget it. I'm not going to put character. One or zero. <laughs> OK. <laughs> I don't want to go into that. Let's go step by step. So now in here, I'm going to say scanf, OK, percent %d. Int answer. Percent D address of user's answer. Okay? Now, if user enters one, what does it mean? It means that wants to continue, right? So I'm gonna say if answer is equal to zero, if it's the same thing as zero, then they don't want to continue, right? They want to stop. I'm going to say done is one. Done. OK? So I'm saying, give me an answer. If answer is zero, done is one, it's going to stop. I have used lots of extra variables for no reason. OK? You can use different types of things to make it better than this. It's awful way to write it. I'm telling you, it's not the most efficient way. It's not a good way of doing it. It's just what the class leads. So I'm going to teach it, and then we're going to find out, oh, that's not good. We could do this. We could do that. But does it make sense? Does this make sense? OK. So now if I do this, I user can keep entering stuff and says it's 0 or 1. And again, we assume user is sane. OK. It's not going to enter something garbage. So. Or instead of that, we could say printf done, right? Correct? Now, if that's the case, then I did not need to have another variable. So I'm going to say address of done. And I did not need to set anything anymore. So if user says, user says done, yes, done becomes one. Then it stops. If it says no, zero, done is not one. So now user can actually keep entering stuff until, so it's going to say over here, 30. Try harder. Done, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say 70. Yeah, I'm going to say yes, I'm done. I, I wrote a bad program. Since I've written such a nice program in here, printf, I'm going to say goodbye. And now the program ends. 
you have written the first, you have seen the first interactive program in Z language. And every single thing that you do is going to be like this. The only thing that we're going to teach you is how to go through the repetition properly, how to be able to manage your thought, to go from business logic on a paper and translate it into ifs and loops. Now, we have, let's, uh, oh, I have, whew, I have like 13 minutes, man. Uh, let me just, so, so I'm going to, uh, uh, I'm going to say over 0, 06. I'm going to say interactive. Let's see. Okay. Now the next thing. Loops are not always like this. Loops sometimes happen mathematically. They end. Say I want to draw a bar. So in here I'm going to say uh, int length. I'm going to say printf. Or, yeah, how long the bar should be, okay? And again, user is sane, and it, user knows that it cannot be more than 80 characters. Why? You'll see why, okay? So I'm going to have over here scanf percent %d address of length. Now in here, I'm going to create, this is where I say you do integer i, and it's done, it's a, a, a normal thing for a, for a loop. So in here, I'm going to say i set to 0, while i is less than length. In here, I'm going to say printf. What do I draw a bar with? Um, um, dash. And then I'm going to say I++. Plus plus. Then in here, I'm going to say printf, go to new line, and voila. Here is your bar. Oh. I should say it over here, actually. Printf, here is your bar. Okay, I run this program. How long should the bar be? Then I'm going to say over here four, and here's your bar. Right? Now in, in here I'm going to say how long the bar should be. In here I'm going to say 70. And here's your bar. Right? Now, we can actually, what we can do, we can reuse our code. Where is that interactive thingy? Right? I can bring this, you see, I'm just copying that int done thingy, you see that? Let me actually first save this. Save, in here I'm going to say 08, uh, that's 98, too much, 08, 08, oh, come on Fardad, you can do it. 08, uh, what is that, uh, um, mm, bar, let's see, <laughs> okay, so. Now, I, I, I'm, just I'm just copying this. You see, I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go right to the beginning of this thing and put it right over here. That's that, right? And in here, I'm going to put the end of while loop. Then in here, I'm going to say printf done. See? I'm going to come back over here. Put that one in, and voila. Now I can have many bars. Not mini bar, many bars, right? So now it's going to keep going over and over and stop. So I'm going to say control of 5. Now it's going to say how long the bar should be. I'm going to say 7. Done. I'm going to say no. How long the bar should be? 79. Whoosh, that big. And now I'm done. What happened? What happened? Oh. <laughs> now you can see how sick I am. All right. So I, I, I swear to whatever, I, I could actually see I'm pressing 1, but I was pressing 0. Anyways, so now you see what's going on. So that's that. Now, 
going back to, so that's, in here I'm going to say zero, zero 09 interactive, interactive bar. Let's see, now, what I wanted to tell you is that you got, you got to go home and start doing this. Write stupid little programs. You don't do that, you're not going to go anywhere. Okay? What's the time? I have more time. Now, have you ever been to Wendy's? And you go over there and say, I want combo number two. And they give you the burger and the fries and the Coke so you don't so, because you think your jaw is going to get tired to say three of them. You may lose a calorie or two. So you want to just say number one. So the whole thing comes. Okay, so you don't have to say the Coke and the fries and stuff. It's the same thing over here. You can do that over here, okay? So when you're too tired to actually say over there, integer i, and it's a while not done, and then, uh, sorry, not that one. Uh, let me put the other, bring the other one, regular bar. Where is bar? Control A, C. Okay, you see in here, I'm saying I zero, I less than length, I plus plus. There is a combo for that. That combo is this. That combo is this. 4i set to 0, i less than length, i plus plus. OK? Now, when I tell you, when I tell you that these two are identical, I'm not trying to play games of any kind or anything like that. Potatoes, potatoes, identical things. That's why I never talk about a for loop, because it's kind of crazy. Like you see that, you don't understand what the heck is going on. With while loop, you just say, OK, I, while this, do that. It's kind of soothing. You understand this. For i0, semicolon, i less than i plus plus, identical. Those two things are exactly the same. No difference. If you look at the assembler, when it's being translated, the outcome of the assembly language of these two are identical, the same. No difference with speed, but see people want to do thing quick, things quickly. That's why they did that. So that's the for loop. You do not need to use it ever in this course. If you want to use it, good. If you understand it, fine. If you don't, don't. Use the while loop. Learn how to do logic. When the time comes, you're going to learn how to do another loop. Are we OK with this? So that's that one. One more thing about a loop that I'm going to tell you, loop, 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 is that sometimes you want things to happen at least once. <clears throat> so in here, I'm going to say exactly, exa ex the same as while. No difference, right? So, zero. So, 10 dash uh, uh, 4 instead of while. Let's see, okay? So, when we have A while loop, when we have a while loop, okay, because the condition is right at the top, because the condition is right at the top, it is possible that the contents of while never happens. So if right now the length that they put is minus 3, nothing's going to get printed, correct? Sometimes the logic dictates that you want things to at least happen once. So you want to do something and then check the condition and repeat it. So essentially, you want the condition to be checked at the end of the loop. All right? If you want something like that, you can literally bring this condition to the end of the loop and put a semicolon at the end of it. Okay? Now there's nothing at the beginning, you just put a do. It's the exact same thing. The only difference is that it says do these while this condition is true. 
The only difference is that because there is no condition at the beginning of the loop, this happens at least once. So if the user is dumb enough that you tell the user how long the bar should be and user says minus 10, it's going to print at least one. <laughs> you see that? But in the other one, it wouldn't do that. Because it's minus, it would never happen. So these are all the different loops that you have. The switch statement, I'm not interested about right now. Okay. Switch statement uh, only is used for equality. So we'll talk about it when the time comes. I'm not going to uh, force you to use it at all. Okay. So even if you see in any workshop it says use a switch statement to do it, don't. Use a, an if-else statement. A switch statement is essentially like an if-else statement. No difference. There is nothing that you cannot do with only if and while till the end of the semester. All right? And that's logic. That's the whole thing. Now, your job is to try, go home, try to write little stupid things and keep repeating, keep doing it. As you see, I, I wrote a little program, then I put a condition around it to repeat it over and over. Do stuff like that. I don't know, I'll write a little calculator of yours and things like that. Do uh, write a few programs and then uh, try to make mistakes. That's the most important thing. Write a program that doesn't work. That's the best exercise. If you write a program that doesn't work, then you learn. Okay, that's the most important thing. Hit errors, that's important. Have a beautiful day and see you next time. Remember